When we're speaking of water control here, we're referring not to the water level control, but rather to the quality of water which is contained in the boiler. We already know that a special water treatment plant, including demineralizers and other equipment, is installed in order to ensure that water which is fed into the boiler is super pure. Additionally, certain chemicals are injected into the boiler drum to further control the chemical condition of the boiler water. So what is it exactly that we are protecting the boiler against? What are the problems that can arise as a result of feeding impure water into the boiler? Well, the principal problems arising from poor water conditioning are the formation of scale and deposits inside boiler tubes, the carryover of water with the steam, internal corrosion causing wastage of boiler tubes. Let's take a closer look at each of these items. First, the problem of scale. As much as we try to provide perfectly pure water to the boiler, it is inevitable that some small quantity of contaminants do get through and concentrate in the boiler water as more and more steam is evaporated. Remember, as water evaporates into steam, the solids contained in the water remain behind, and this concentration increases as more and more steam evaporates. This is the situation which occurs in the boiler. Generally speaking, the contaminants consist of magnesium and calcium salts, which are dissolved in the water and contribute to hardness, silica, the products of corrosion of the boiler itself and the feed water system, mainly iron and copper. At high temperatures, such as encountered in boiler water and above a certain concentration, these solid materials precipitate out of solution and deposit on the inside of the tube wall. This deposit then forms an extremely hard scale that cannot be removed by the flow of water. The scale acts as a partial insulator of heat and so prevents adequate cooling of the boiler tube by the flow of water passing through the tube. The result is that the temperature of the tube wall metal rises significantly. And in certain zones of the boiler where the radiant heat transfer is at its highest, overheating of the boiler tube metal takes place. The eventual result of this is a failure of the metallic structure with consequent rupture of the tube. Where boiler water contains a high concentration of solids, you should expect frequent tube failures with the resultant need to take the boiler out of service for repairs. In order to prevent this problem as far as possible, limits are established on the allowable concentration of solids that may be contained in the boiler water. This table indicates limits for both dissolved solids and suspended solids. The problem of scaling is aggravated at higher steam pressure because of the higher saturation temperature of the water. Therefore, as we see here, the permitted limit of concentration is much lower when the boiler operates at higher steam pressure. But how can we reduce the concentration of solids? Well, one method is by continuous blowdown. That is a regulated quantity of water discharged from the bottom of the drum to waste. A control valve is fitted to allow us to regulate the quantity of continuous blowdown. But how can this reduce the concentration of solids in the boiler water? Well, remember, the blowdown water may contain 500 parts per million of solids, and this is replaced by boiler feed water, which contains perhaps 5 ppm. The result, then, is dilution, with the consequent reduction in total solids concentration. As the blowdown water is at relatively high temperature, between 400 and 500 degrees Fahrenheit, it is discharged into a blowdown tank. This permits some of the high temperature water to flash off into steam and to be vented to atmosphere. The remaining water is then discharged to waste. Of course, there are some losses involved in discharging blowdown to waste. First, there is the loss of heat contained in the water, and secondly, the loss of water itself with consequent increase in makeup requirements. Actually, the best way of keeping the solids content of boiler water at a low level is by maintaining control over boiler feed water and its makeup. 
The actual limits established for boiler feed water contaminants depend upon the particular boiler operating pressure and temperature and operating regime. However, we would typically expect to find the following analysis of boiler feed water and makeup. These concentrations are given in parts per million ppm. Total dissolved solids are less than 5 ppm. Silica is below 0.15 ppm. Alkalinity is 2 ppm or less. Hardness, as calcium carbonate, is at 2 ppm or less. Feed water may also contain some products of corrosion from the condensate and feed water system. This usually consists of particles of iron and copper which are dissolved into the water stream from pipework and heat exchangers. All of this material ends up in the boiler and increases the concentration of solids. The target limit for copper and iron in feed water is usually established at 10 parts per billion or less. Oh, we'll be talking more about corrosion later in this module. Even with all of these precautions and controls, there is still a tendency for the concentration of solids to build up in the boiler water. For this reason, an attempt is made to prevent scale formation by injecting a chemical dispersant such as phosphate into the boiler water. This is usually added at the boiler drum, so a high pressure pump is required. Phosphate has the effect of keeping the magnesium and calcium precipitate in suspension by dispersing the solid particles throughout the water. The result then is that instead of forming a hard scale, the solids remain as a slurry to be discharged from the boiler through the continuous blowdown line. The addition of trisodium or disodium phosphate to the boiler water does have some negative aspects. For one, it adds yet further solids to the water. In addition to this, it will affect the pH value of the water and this may aggravate corrosion. We'll discuss this later. Another problem associated